really interesting bark, maybe with knots in it. And then you have that tree is on the um, bank of the river, and it's a muddy river. So then you have the reflection of that tree in the muddy river. And if you want to get the uh, any fruit, oh, how wonderful, there's a fruit. Let me taste that fruit, I'm quite hungry. Oh, it's just muddy water. Well, there's a flower. Let me smell that flower. Oh, it's just muddy river. There's no real substance in this material world because we are not this body. We're spirit soul. And this body, as it says in the Christian Bible, dust thou wert, dust thou beest. The body is just dust. In fact, uh, between the next three days, I'll share some of my remembrances of Prabhupada when we were in Boston with him together uh, back in the late 60s up to 70. And we went with him to, uh, I think it was Boston University, and he was uh, giving the class, and he said to the students, this body, which you are soaping so nicely, <laughs> turns into three things, one of three things, after you leave it, depending on what you think your religion is. Like if you think that you're a Christian, then the body turns into dust. If you think that you're a Hindu, then the body gets burnt and the body turns into ashes. If you think that you're a Parsi, then they throw the body into the streets and the body's eaten by dogs and it turns into the stool of the dog. So Prabhupada said, this body, which you're soaping so nicely, turns into dust, ashes, or stool after you, the real person, leaves it. So uh, the pastimes that we experience uh, in this world are ju just a perverted reflection of our real pastimes, of the pastimes of our soul with the Supreme Soul and his associates. So there are many separation pastimes. Like here, the separation pastimes are miserable. Like uh, somebody dies, or my wife leaves me for another man, or um, my daughter goes to summer camp, and that's all that separation is painful. But the nature of the separation pastimes of Krishna and the gopis, Krishna and Mother Yasoda, Krishna and his friends, are all, they all have three qualities, sat, chit, and ananda, eternal, full of bliss, and full of knowledge. So, during the time of separation, which is called viraha in Hindi or Sanskrit, V means special. You speak Hindi? V means special, right? And raha means meeting. So it's a very special kind of meeting at the time of separation. There's internal meeting, and everything around us, external, is forgotten. And there's an extra kind of meeting, just like you all, I think, are familiar with the Ramayan. Most of you? Yes? Ramayan? So when Sita was kidnapped by Ravana, and she was in that Ashok forest, uh, and all those demonesses were there, and every once in a while Ravana would come and propose to her. And she was always absorbed in Ram, 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 and she was always remembering, like, when we first met, when we were married, and she was deeply absorbed in the mood of separation, but in remembering those pastimes, they were right there with her. She was actually experiencing them at the time. Ram was always coming to her. Same thing with Yasoda and Krishna, same thing with Radharani and Krishna. So it's sometimes it's even more fulfilling than meeting, because in meeting pastimes, you're so absorbed in the externals of the activities together that you forget the internal. So when we say Krishna, Krishna, and Hare, Hare, we can remember so many um, separation pastimes. Like, for example, when Krishna goes to Mathura, Radharani is speaking with the bumblebee. 
And actually this bumblebee, because Krishna can't bear to be away from Radharani any amount of time, Radharani and the gopis, so he himself came as the bumblebee just to experience her love and separation. So Radharani speaking with this bumblebee and telling the bumblebee, I know why you've come here, because she's in the madness of separation. Just like madness here, again, is a perverted reflection, uh, it's emptiness, whereas that madness is full of transcendental love. So she tells the um, bee, I know why you came. You came because you want us to make some kind of compromise with Krishna, us gopis. But I'll tell you, and you can tell him when you go back to Mathura, that we're absolutely not interested in having any compromise and in having any relationship with him. Because we know that uh, we gave everything to him. We gave our whole lives to him. We left our husbands, our, uh, our sense of caring about the abuse of society. And, and now we're just like birds living in the forest, and he's gone to Mathura with all those fancy princesses of Mathura. And we're not interested in him um, trying to um, appease our uh, jealous anger. Let him do that with all the princesses. There's thousands of them there in Mathura. Let him go from one to another to another. And I know why your whiskers are uh, reddish. Because I know this is in the madness of prame and separation. I know why your whiskers are yellowish red. Because when Krishna is embracing the princesses in uh, Mathura, the um, kumkum from their breasts gets on Krishna's garland, and then you sit on Krishna's garland. And that's how, and you have their kumkum on your whiskers. So don't come to us to make any compromise. And then the bee flies away and comes back the next minute, and she's, uh, then she becomes so humble. Oh, uh, I don't want to offend Krishna in any way. Don't tell him all these things. And so, so many very beautiful pastimes go on in separation. Um, other separation is when Krishna is first leaving Vrindavan and the chariot is leaving and the, um, the hoofs from the horses make the dust from the chariot rise up in their air and then the dust falls on the bodies of the gopis and then the dust mixes with their tears and thus stays there. So they don't go home after that and they don't bathe or change their clothes because they want their, that last connection with Krishna, the dust from the chariot mixed with their tears and then they're just uh, lying down sometimes conscious, remembering the pastimes of Krishna and sharing it with each other, sometimes becoming unconscious at Udhavkiri. So, or there's uh, separation pastimes just when Krishna goes out cow herding during the day. And the gopis uh, have a very power, the gopis are very powerful by their love. Just like uh, you all know Bhagavad Gita, so in Bhagavad Gita, Sanjaya is speaking to the blind king Dhritarashtra. And by the mystic power that he received from his spiritual master, Vyasdev, he was able to see what was going on in the battlefield 90 miles away. And now Krishna is saying this to Arjuna, and now Arjuna is lamenting, and Krishna is saying, you're lamenting, but you're lamenting... Uh, just like a sudra, you're lamenting for the body, it has no value. A wise man laments neither for the living nor for the dead. So Sanjaya was able to do that, see like a spiritual TV in his heart. But the gopis were millions of times, are millions of times more powerful than Sanjaya because their love is so much more uh, deep and intimate. 
So whenever Krishna would go out cowherding, the gopis would feel like every moment is a millennium. And they would sit in their uh, different houses with gopis of equal minds, who are the intimate friends, and they would see Krishna with their uh, bhava netra, or the eyes of their transcendental moods. They would see him in the heart as he would be out in the forest. And then they would lament, seeing how all the other residents of Vrindavan, like for example the deer, the deer are so much more fortunate than us, because when the deer hear Krishna's flute playing, uh, they immediately uh, leave their husbands and come out to share Sai Lorn glances with Krishna. Uh, 